Brought to you by wikivd.com Percy Fawcett Lieutenant Colonel Percival Harrison Fawcett was a British geographer, artillery officer, cartographer, archaeologist and explorer of South America, along with his eldest son. Fawcett disappeared in 1925 during an expedition to find Z his name for an ancient lost city, which he and others believed to exist and to be the remains of El Dorado in the jungles of Brazil. Early Life Percy Fawcett was born on 18 August 1867 in Torquay, Devon, England to Edward Boyd Fawcett and Myra Elizabeth. He received his early education at Newton Abbott Proprietary College along with Bertram Fletcher Robinson. Percy Fawcett's India-born father was a fellow of the Royal Geographical Society. His elder brother Edward Douglas Fawcett was a mountain climber Eastern occultist an author of philosophical books and popular adventure novels. Fawcett attended the Royal Military Academy Woolwich as a cadet, being commissioned as a lieutenant of the Royal Artillery on 24 July 1886. On 13 January 1896 he was appointed adjutant of the 1st Cornwall Artillery Volunteers, and was promoted to captain on 15 June 1897. He later served in Trincomar Le Salon, where he also met his future wife Nina Agnes Patterson, whom he married in January 1901 after having previously ended their engagement. They had two sons, Jack and Brian and one daughter Joan. He joined the RGS himself in 1901 in order to study surveying and map making. Later he worked for the British Secret Service in North Africa while pursuing the surveyor's craft. He served for the War Office on Spike Island, County Cork from 1903 to 1906 where he was promoted to Major on the 11th of January 1905. He became friends with authors H. Ryder Haggard and Arthur Conan Doyle, the latter used Fawcett's Amazonian field reports as an inspiration for his novel The Lost World. Early Expeditions Fawcett's first expedition to South America was in 1906 when at the age of 39 he traveled to Brazil to map a jungle area at the border of Brazil and Bolivia. At the behest of the Royal Geographical Society, the Society had been commissioned to map the area as a third party unbiased by local national interests. He arrived in La Paz, Bolivia in June. Whilst on the expedition in 1907, Fawcett claimed to have seen and shot a 62-foot-long giant anaconda acclaim for which he was ridiculed by scientists. He reported other mysterious animals unknown to zoology such as a small cat-like dog about the size of a foxhound which he claimed to have seen twice, or the giant Apizoucha spider which was said to have poisoned a number of locals. Fawcett made seven expeditions between 1906 and 1924. He was mostly amicable with the locals through gifts, patience and courteous behavior. In 1908, he traced the source of the Rio Verde and in 1910 made a journey to Heath River to find its source having retired from the British Army on 19 January. After a 1913 expedition, he supposedly claimed to have seen dogs with double noses. These may have been double-nosed Andean tiger hounds. Based on documentary research Fawcett had, by 1914 formulated ideas about a lost city he named Z. Somewhere in the Mato Grosso region of Brazil, he theorized that a complex civilization once existed in the Amazon region, and that isolated ruins may ha have survived. Fawcett also found a document known as written after explorations made in the Sertão of the state of Bahia and housed at the National Library of Rio de Janeiro. It is believed to be by Portuguese Bandeirante, who wrote that in 1753 he discovered the ruins of an ancient city that contained arches a statue, 
and a temple with hieroglyphics. The city is described in great detail without providing a specific location. This city became a secondary destination for Fawcett after Z. At the beginning of the First World War, Fawcett returned to Britain to serve with the army as a reserve officer in the Royal Artillery volunteering for duty in Flanders and commanding an artillery brigade despite the fact that he was nearly 50 years of age. He was promoted from Major to Lieutenant Colonel on 1 March 1918 and received three mentions in dispatches from Douglas Haig in November 1916, November 1917 and November 1918 and was also awarded the Distinguished Service Order in June 1917. After the war Fawcett returned to Brazil to study local wildlife and archaeology. In 1920, he made a solo attempt to search for Z but ended after suffering from a fever and shooting his pack animal. Final Expedition in 1925, with funding from a London-based group of financiers known as the Glove, Fawcett returned to Brazil with his eldest son Jack and Jack's best and longtime friend Raleigh Rimmel for an exploratory expedition to find Zed. Fawcett left instructions stating that if the expedition did not return, no rescue expedition should be sent lest the rescuers suffer his fate. Fawcett was a man with years of experience traveling and had brought equipment such as canned foods, powdered milk, guns, flares, a sextant, and a chronometer. His travel companions were both chosen for their health, ability, and loyalty to each other. Fawcett chose only two companions in order to travel lighter and with less notice to native tribes, as some were hostile towards outsiders. On 20 April 1925 his final expedition departed from Cuiaba. In addition to his two principal companions Fawcett was accompanied by two Brazilian laborers, two horses, eight mules and a pair of dogs. The last communication from the expedition was on 29 May 1925 when Fawcett wrote in a letter to his wife delivered by a native runner that he was ready to go into unexplored territory with only Jack and Rally. They were reported to be crossing the Upper Zingua southeastern tributary river of the River Amazon. The final letter written from Dead Horse Camp gave the location and was generally optimistic. Many people assumed that local Indians killed them as several tribes were nearby. At the time, the Kalapalos, the last tribe to have seen them, the Aramasuas, and the Zavantes whose territory they were entering. The Kalapalo have an oral story of the arrival of three explorers which states that the three went east and after five days the Kalapalo noticed that the group no longer made campfires. The Kalapalo say that a very violent tribe most likely killed them. However, both of the younger men were lame and ill when last seen and there is not any proof that they were murdered. It is plausible that they died of natural causes in the Brazilian jungle. In 1927, a name plate of Fawcett was found with an Indian tribe. In June 1933, a theodolite co compass belonging to Fawcett was found near the Baixari Indians of Mato Grosso by Colonel Aniceto Botello. However, the name plate was from Fawcett's expedition five years earlier, and had most likely been given as a gift to the chief of that Indian tribe. The compass was proved to have been left behind before he entered the jungle on his final journey. Dead Horse Camp Dead Horse Camp, a Fawcett's camp, is one of the main major camps that Fawcett made on his final journey. This encampment was his last known location. From Dead Horse Camp, Fawcett wrote to his wife about the hardships that he and his companions had faced his coordinates, his doubts in Rally Rimmel and of his plans for the near future. He concludes his message with, You need have no fear of any failure. One question remaining about Dead Horse Camp concerns a discrepancy in the coordinates Fawcett gave for the camp.
In the letter to his wife he wrote, Here we are at Dead Horse Camp latitude 11 degrees 43 feet south and longitude 54 degrees 35 feet west. The spot where my horse died in 1920. However in a report to the North American newspaper Alliance he gave the coordinates as the discrepancy may have been a typographical error. However, he may have intentionally concealed the location to prevent others from using his notes to find the lost city. It may have also been an attempt to dissuade any rescue attempts. Fawcett had stated that if he disappeared no rescue party should be sent because the danger was too great. Rumors and unverified reports During the ensuing decades various groups mounted several rescue expeditions without success. They heard only various rumors that could not be verified, while a fictitious tale estimated that 100 would-be rescuers died on several expeditions, attempting to discover Fawcett's fate. The actual toll was only one a sole man who ventured after him alone. One of the earliest expeditions was commanded by American explorer George Miller Dyot. In 1927 he claimed to have found evidence of Fawcett's death at the hands of the Alawik Indians. But his story was unconvincing. From 1930-31 Aloha Wanda Well used her seaplane to try to land on the Amazon River in the Mato Grosso to find him. After an emergency landing and living with the Bororo tribe for six weeks Aloha and her husband Walter flew back to Brazil with no luck. A 1951 expedition unearthed human bones that were found later to be unrelated to Fawcett or his companions. Villas Boas story Danish explorer and folk Ron journeyed to the Mato Grosso during the 1960s. In a 1991 book, he wrote that he learned of Fawcett's fate from Orlando Villas Boas who had heard it from one of Fawcett's murderers. Allegedly Fawcett and his companions had a mishap on the river, and lost most of the gifts they'd brought along for the Indian tribes. Continuing without gifts was a serious breach of protocol, since the expedition members were all more or less seriously ill at the time. The Kalapalo tribe they encountered decided to kill them. The bodies of Jack Fawcett and Raleigh Rimmel were thrown into the river. Colonel Fawcett considered an old man, and therefore distinguished received a proper burial. Fulgron visited the Kalapalo tribe and reported that one of the tribe's men confirmed Villas Boas's story about how and why Fawcett had been killed. Fawcett's Bones In 1951 Orlando Villas Boas activist for indigenous peoples supposedly received the actual remaining skeletal bones of Fawcett and had them analyzed scientifically. The analysis allegedly confirmed the bones to be Fawcett's, but his son Brian Fawcett refused to accept this. Villas Boas claimed that Brian was too interested in making money from books about his father's disappearance. Later scientific analysis confirmed that the bones were not Fawcett's. As of 1965, the bones reportedly rested in a box in the flat of one of the Villas Boas brothers in Sao Paulo. In 1998 English explorer Benedict Allen went to talk to the Kalapo Indians said by Villas Boas to have confessed to having killed the three Fawcett expedition members. An elder of the Kalapalo, Vajuvi claimed during a filmed BBC interview with Allen that the bones found by Villas Boas some 45 years before were not really Fawcett's. Vajuvi also denied that his tribe had any part in the Fawcett's disappearance. No conclusive evidence supports either statement. Russian Documentary In 2003 a Russian documentary film was released as a part of the television series. Among other things, the film emphasizes the recent expedition of Oleg Aliyev, 
to the presumed approximate place of Fawcett's last whereabouts and Ali Yef's findings, impressions, and presumptions about Fawcett's fate. Commune in the Jungle On 21 March 2004, the British newspaper The Observer reported that television director Misha Williams who had studied Fawcett's private papers believed that Fawcett had not intended to return to Britain but rather meant to found a commune in the jungle based on thesosophical principles and the worship of his son Jack. Williams explained his research in some detail in the preface to his play Amazonia first performed in April 2004. Grand's Lost City of Z. In 2005 the New Yorker staff writer David Gran visited the Kalapalo tribe and reported that it had apparently preserved an oral history about Fawcett. Among the first Europeans the tribe had ever seen, the oral account said that Fawcett and his party had stayed at their village and then left heading eastward. The Kalapalos warned Fawcett and his companions that if they went that way they would be killed by the fierce Indians who occupied the territory, but Fawcett insisted on going. The Kalapalos observed smoke from the expedition's campfire each evening. For five days before it disappeared, the Kalapalos said they were sure the fierce Indians had killed them. The article also reports that a monumental civilization known as Kuhi Kugu may have actually existed near where Fawcett was searching as discovered recently by archaeologist Michael Heckenberger and others. Grand's findings are further detailed in his book The Lost City of Z. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?